Hi, my name is Bon Clifford G. Cernelia, and welcome to my tutorial video on dynamic programming. This video will only focus on the basic notions of dynamic programming, but it is encouraged that you have a little learning or a little know-how of linear programming and optimization as a whole. So let's start. What is dynamic programming? Dynamic programming is a mathematical technique dealing with the optimization of multi-stage decision processes. This was coined by the mathematician Richard Ernest Bellman in the 1950s when he was writing his book on approximate dynamic programming. But in order to understand all of it, let's have a little example. For example, we have Waldo, and Waldo wants to go from point A to point F, but he has to pass through four different points. This is a very common example, which is called the shortest path problem. And usually we solve this with one of the most common approaches, which is called the greedy algorithm or the greedy approach. So let's try. From point A, Waldo has two choices, either to go to point B or to point C. Obviously, Waldo wants to take the shortest path, which is two kilometers. So he goes to point C. From point C, he has three diff different options. Either he goes to point B, to point D, or to point E. And he looks at the distances, and the shortest one is one kilometer, so he goes to point B. From point B, he only has one option, and that is to go to point D. And then from there, he also has another only just one option, which is for two kilometers, and that ends him up at point F, for a total of 10 kilometers. But is there a better way to do this? Of course there is, and we use dynamic programming for that. So we have two very common approaches, one which is called backward recursion approach and the forward recursion approach. Let's look at again Waldo's problem. In dynamic programming, what we do is we divide the entire master problem into different sub-problems, or what we call stages. Here, we have four different stages for that. And what we want is to solve each of the sub-problem and as a whole, be able to solve the optimal value for the entire master problem. So let's try the backward recursion approach. The backward recursion approach states that what we have to do is to start at the end node and then we have to find f of x which is the minimum distance between node x and node y. So we have to find the function f of x for every node starting at the very end node, which is in this case, node f. So let's start. f of f here is equal to zero because of course, there's no distance to go to itself. Thus, f of f is equal to zero. Notice that at the left side of the screen, we will be writing the entire solution for each of the nodes. After that, we move back up to stage two. At stage two, we have two nodes to consider, node D and node E. Here, we have to find F of D. From D, there's only one way to go to F, and that is direct at two kilometers. Therefore, the value of our F of D is equal to two. What is more interesting is our node E. From node E, we can actually pass by from D going to F or directly from E to F. What we have to do here is to find the minimum between the two paths. So either E to F, which is three kilometers, or four plus F of D, which is equal to six. In this case, the minimum value is three. So the value of our f of e is equal to three. Now we move to stage one. At stage one, we will consider two nodes again. Let's start with node b. From node b, there is only one way to go to node f, and that is to pass by node d. Thus, we have to find the value of f of b, and that is five kilometers plus the value of f of d, which is equal to seven. Now, at f of c, there are three ways in order to go to f of f, either to pass by b, to pass by d, or to pass by e. 
what we have to do is to find the minimum between all of these paths. So first, let's try 2 kilometers plus f of e, which is equal to 3. 4 kilometers plus value of f of d, which is equal to 2 kilometers. And 1 kilometer plus the value of f of b, which is 7. Here, what we found is the shortest path is c to e, which is 5 kilometers. Therefore, the value of f of c is equal to 5. Now let's move to our stage 0, which is our starting node. From point A, we can either go to point B or to point C. So what we have to do is to get the minimum value between 3 plus f of B, which is equal to 10, and 2 kilometers plus f of C, which is equal to 7. And the minimum between the two is 7. Therefore, the value of our f of A is 7. And that is our total distance from point A to point F. And that is shorter than the 10 kilometers we found with our greedy algorithm. So what is the path that Waldo needs to pass through in order to go from point A to point F? That is from point A to point C, point C to point E, and then point E to point F. In dynamic programming, there is also a notion called principle of optimality. Principle of optimality states that in an optimal sequence of decisions, each subsequences must also be optimal. Remember that dynamic programming tries to solve multi-stage sequential problems. So what does principle of optimality mean? For example, we have two points F and T, and we know that there exists a path called path f of t, which is the optimal path to reach point t from point f. If, for example, in that path, we have to pass by node k, it means that from path f to k and path k to t is equal to path f of t, which is again our optimal path or our optimal solution. If, for an instance, there is another path called path f of k star, and if this path is less than f of k, that means that path f of k star plus path k of t is less than path f of k plus path k to t. But then, we know that path f of k and path k to t is our optimal solution. This means that path f of k star does not exist. That is the principle of optimality because we know that path f of k and path k of t are already optimal solutions. Dynamic programming can actually solve a lot of different types of problems, either deterministic or stochastic. In deterministic type of problems, we have shortest path problem, the example we just looked at a while ago, the knapsack problem, equipment replacement, capital budgeting problem, among others. For probabilistic or stochastic problems, we have the very common inventory problem or the newspaper problem. So here is one another example that I want you to solve. So you can press pause and then try to solve it. So thank you very much for listening in my tutorial on dynamic programming. You can comment your answers below or you can send me an email if you have questions. Thank you and have a great day.